earthly treasures and heavenly treasures. He emphasized the importance of the heavenly by saying to you, don't store up your treasures on earth where moths and rust can destroy it and where thieves can break in and steal it, but you need to learn to store your treasures in heaven. Now we might understand that his focus realistically was more on the spiritual than it was the earthly, but people's mind is so caught up on the earthly that they can't get spiritually healthy. That they spend so much time trying to get money, trying to get things, trying to buy stuff, that realistically their spiritual life is destroyed and their earthly life is successful. For how can you be happy when there's no connection to God, but you got a connection to a dog? How can you be satisfied when you see a car in the driveway, but God is not felt in your house? How can you be satisfied on the job that tells you they'll give you more money if you work more hours, but Jesus said a cow on a thousand hills is healed, and the silver and gold belongs to him, and you want it, he'll provide. Right. That we're so caught up with stuff that we forget stuff don't like us. Oh, A treasure is anything that you value more in your inner heart than you do anything else. For what you value will begin to show where your heart truly is. If you value stuff, when you get stuff, your chest will be all poked out when you buy a new trinket. You will get excited and want people to see your new trinket. If your wife or your husband is what you value more than God, you will value them on what they say more than what God told you to do. Mm. For we need to determine, first of all, what is our treasure? And then secondly, is that treasure more important than going to heaven or would you risk the treasure to go to heaven? Uh -oh. Uh -oh. For some of us have jumped on that road to hell because we value the person more than we value God. God tells you to read the Bible. The person tells you to watch uh, Atlanta's housewife. <laughs> God tells you to seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added but that person told you it don't take all that <laughs> God told you to bring all of your tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat for the master's use and yet that person told you let's go to dinner you pay your tithes later See, we need to determine what's our treasure, what do we value more, and how do we hold that value in such a way that it does not mess up our spiritual life. Jesus warns us that earthly currency uh, will and it has expired. And while we may be separate, satisfied in temporary things, the spiritual things bring us eternal fulfillment. And that is the crux of the story. That's all Jesus was trying to get us to see. But what I found out is, if you will allow me to extrapolate from the text, I found out three things that are very important that the saints today need more so than we need anything else. For if you are going to be the saint that God wants you to be, the Christian that God knows you should be, if you want to be the representation of who God is, God tells us through the text that we need to do three things. The first thing he tells us in verse number 19 is we got to learn how to sharpen up. Don't store yourself treasures on earth. He said, get yourself together, tighten up your ship. He says you gotta sharpen it up. But then he says you gotta straighten up in verse number 20. He said, learn where to put your stuff at. <laughs> then lastly, in verse number 21, he tells us that we need to be filled up for where your treasure is. There your heart will be also. Here's what's interesting. 
The word heart in the Bible appears 1,000 times. It, it has different types of meaning, but literally the structure or the emphasis is really much the same. It, it talks about the perspective of the heart. Watch this. Being the seat or the center part of life strength. It means sometimes your mind, it means sometimes your soul, it means your spirit, and then lastly, or second to last, it means one's entire or entire emotional nature and understanding. So in a sense, when the Bible talks about your heart, it's literally talking about your mind. It's, it's talking about getting your emotions together so that you can have a clear understanding of what you're consuming. <laughs> Scholars and doctors say, watch this, that a healthy heart pumps the right amount of blood at a rate that allows the body to function. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that would mean in order for a saint to have a healthy mind, soul, or understanding, the right amount of word needs to be filtered into the mind so that we can make right decisions and not emotional decisions that will destroy the body. That's right. Ask yourself, how many emotional decisions have you made? How many decisions did you make without God being the focal point of your decision? If the heart is the center, that means the heart is the very nucleus of our spiritual activity. And it operates in such a way that our emotions, if we don't get them together, will overtake us and we will crash and burn into a decision that didn't really make no sense. And if you're not feeling, watch this, if you're not feeling the way you need to feel, maybe you need to feed your life with the right word and stop distorting your own life. What's interesting is you're destroying your own bloodstream. Your enemy didn't attack you and made you or forced you to listen to the wrong stuff. You did it yourself. Your enemy didn't force you and beat you upside the head and make you eat stuff that you knew was going to destroy your body. You fed it to yourself. Your marriage ain't messed up because somebody crept in and messed up your marriage. Your marriage is destroyed because you kept feeding yourself the wrong garbage. Your finances ain't destroyed because somebody came in and took your bank card and ran off and ran up a uh, nice uh, bill and now they done wiped out your account. Your money is messed up because you did it to yourself. How many secret wounded ages do we have that's pointing the finger at everybody else instead of pointing the finger at themselves? Amen. Oh. Amen. You're your worst assassination attempt at your own life. Wow. Wow. You carrying the weapon. You're pulling the trigger. And you're trying to blame somebody else. So what's this? You see, sometimes it ain't the other people. It's what you feed yourself. You ain't reading. You ain't studying. You ain't preparing or preparing all of the right stuff. God gave us 66 books. And he said, if you eat this book, if you get the right diet, if you consume the right stuff, you will have what you need. And you ain't got to worry about right. nothing else. Right. Oh. You feeding yourself on the real housewives, thinking that that is real, and you trying to be a real housewife. Lord. You, you feeding your stuff off yourself off the Instagram and five hours on Facebook and two hours on TikTok and you're consuming all of that trash and then you're crying, my life is messed up. Won't come to Bible class, won't bring a Bible to church, won't read the Bible at work. And here's the reality. Here's what's interesting. Please, please excuse me because this is 
what hit me when I was in my own local office. What's interesting is you ain't doing nothing in the bathroom anyway. Take your Bible in here and read for five minutes. If you don't do nothing but read Psalms 23 in the bathroom or Psalms 97 or Psalms 100 or Psalms 150 so that you can have a nucleus together that when Satan comes in to attack your normalcy of life, you got some scripture to fight him off, but you don't have scripture to fight yourself off. The pandemic is over. It's time to get healthy. And what's crazy is, and this, this tickles me, it may not tickle you. We have so many dietitians of wrong theology in the pew. Oh. Oh. <laughs> That's holding classes of trying to get people help. And they ain't healthy themselves. How you gonna tell me to do sit-ups when your stomach look just as big as mine? <laughs> Didn't wash the day before, and he ran through the laundry and grabbed your dress. Yes. 
Did you ever think that the reason why the mice got blind here is because when the dog ran through the room to chase after the cat, he ran into a dress. Watch this. And the cat was smiling because he thought the rat thought it was going to get away. And the rat went running because he said the dog going to get the cat before he get me. That when he knocked over the bleach, the bleach fell on the mice and the mice ended up with blind. Oh, Colossians 3.25 says, we ain't getting away. 
away with nothing. And since you know this new creature, it's time for you to do something new. Well, quit looking for the negativity. Straighten yourself up. Find something positive to point out. Straighten up your own self. Clean up your own house. Yeah. Man, the Williams brothers sing a wonderful song. Sweep around your own front door before you try to sweep around mine. Right. Learn how to quit speaking doom into your own life and speak something positive within yourself. Watch this. Every Sunday we leave, I try to quote Psalms 19 and 14. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable unto his sight. What's interesting is, is that's a scripture where you're literally taking an oath. <coughs> I know you just thought it was a close. <laughs> that when you recite this, what you're telling God is, God, I ain't going to play with you no more. I'm going to let my yay be yay and my nay be nay. And I'm going to make sure that I always give truth to those that ask. So when you are dealing with God, what God is saying after you've given that oath is, why you lying to him? Why you telling the story then? You know that dress didn't look right on her when she walked out the house. Don't tell her it looked you. Be honest. Amen. Amen. But be honest and love, girl. You might want to try something different. That black one you had looked a whole lot better. <laughs> Set them free, Pastor. Set them free. Titus 1 and 9 says, teaches us how are you going to give instructions when you can't follow instructions? Woo! Man, I'm so sick of people talking about what they want to do in the church and they ain't done it their own self. How you going to teach Bible class if you don't come to Bible class? How you going to teach how you going to do something you don't do yourself? You don't talk about people not tithing and you still giving five dollars. You don't talk about how the church look and it needs to be cleaned up and it needs to be this. When was the last time you jumped on your broom and came down here and cleaned up? If you follow the directions that you want people to follow, maybe then the church would be a lot better off. But we got all of these wonderful people talking all this wonderful stuff, but it ain't applying in their own life. Wow. And then we wonder why our kids are running rapid. You're going to tell them not to cuss, but every time you're on the phone, you cuss. You're going to tell them not to get high, but every time Susie and them come around, you're rolling a black and mild yourself. You gon' tell them not to drink, but yet you hiding your beer in one of them little plastic cups. <laughs> you can't expect people to do what you ain't doing yourself. What's interesting is uh, we 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 have a prayer line on Monday, and every Monday we have the same. Three people on prayer. Every month. Back. I don't care what it is. I don't care what's going on. Back. Them same three people is on prayer. Back. And what's amazing to me is by Tuesday evening, come Thursday evening, I got 12 people calling me talking about, can you pray for me? Why can't you meet me on Monday and we can pray together?
You ain't got to be on so early. She said, no, Pastor, if I don't cut it on now, I won't make it. So she gets on early, puts it on, and then I know from the time who the person is, who the next person, then the next person, and then the next three people, they all in line. And then we got people around here where we teaching the stuff to you on Bible class. We teaching the stuff to you in leadership class. You don't even show up then on them classes and then want to hold on Sunday a private Bible class. Ah, oh, 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 oh. Well, Pastor, you know, I was reading this scripture and I, I just want you to take time out to go over this scripture with me. No, it's Sunday. I'm getting ready for preach. I'm getting ready for worship. I ain't got time to go to my class. I'll see you on Wednesday. Oops, I'm sorry. You're right. I won't see you. <laughs>
I didn't read verse 22 on purpose. Mm -hmm. I, I left you at 21 because 21 uh, uh, kind of left you at limbo of trying to think what title I was going to give it. If I had read 22, 23, and 24, you would have understood what I was trying to do. But 22 says, watch this, the eye is the lamp of the body. If your eye is healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. So if the light within you is darkness, how deep is that darkness? Yeah. And then he hits you with a swing shot and a bat at the same time. He said, no man can serve two masters. Right. You either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. No, you can't serve both God and money. Yeah. Oh. Amen. What's this? Matthew. Through Jesus' own words, when he writes it down, what Jesus is saying, he literally gives you a gut punch because he's saying, quit perpetrating the fraud and quit acting holy on Sunday and living any kind of way on Monday. You got to get healthy because what you keep looking at is what's destroying you. So let me ask you, what are you feeding you that's destroying you? Okay, maybe that, that, that didn't help you. What have you blamed on the enemy that you need to be blaming yourself for? Wow. When are you going to be accountable to you? When are you going to hold yourself to a higher esteem and a higher regard? When, when are you going to put yourself at a place that says I'm better than this? I can do better than what I'm showing. I'm healthier than what I'm displaying. I may need a blood infusion. I may need a shot. I may need
doors of the church is open. I, I'm out here. I, I ain't gonna go do my analogy.
will be coming up from the back sign. Our parking lot will be full, but we will be participating in the parade at the same time. Amen. Matter of fact, I think I might walk from 9 to 10 and then be here for the funeral that starts at 10 o'clock. Amen. Please let us know so we can have what we need to do what we need to do. Amen. And if you just want to drive your car in the parade and you don't want to walk, you need to let me know. Amen. But we're trying to get healthier now in 2022. Amen. So come on, walk with us. Be out of breath with all the rest of us. I'm going to have my little oxygen machine. Amen. Thank you. 